Hey everyone, welcome to the conclusion of the Swanky Zone Super Mario Maker 2 level making competition. Um, we started this about, I mean, what was it? Stogie, was it like what, like two months ago, I think? It feels like forever, but that sounds right. So we some, you know, there was a lot of submissions that came through for this. We tried reaching out to some people who had uh, didn't enter the code correctly, but we weren't able to get every single level. But we were able to get majority of the levels for the competition. Um, and there was a lot of amazing stages that were submitted. So this video, I want to kind of break down our choices for the winners. And the winners, again, first place is a hundred dollar eShop gift card for Nintendo. Second place is a $50. Third place is a $20. And we judged on three different things. You know, the theme creativity, you know, how unique of a concept was it? And you were able to, you know, you were able to put on creative spins of on concepts that other people did too. Did it, you know, the design of the level, did it help solidify the job or the place of occupation? Was there a story to it? Did it help tell a story? Was it a story that we could also follow along easily with the level itself without having an explanation ahead of time? I mean, and then the wow factor is just something kind of like, was there something super memorable about the level that, uh, you know, kind of stuck with us? That was really cool. So those are kind of the three things that we were going with. And you guys blew us away. Honestly, you guys had some amazing level submissions. Yeah, it definitely took us a long time to go through all of them. It was fun doing it, but very uh, time consuming. But it was amazing. All the submissions. Which made this selection process uh, very, very difficult. But uh, we've basically nailed it down to five. So there's our first place, a second place, a third place, and our two runner-ups. So we're gonna start with the runner-ups. Our first runner-up just barely didn't make into the top category. Still completely amazing levels. We have Mario Starts a Mushroom Farm by Noah1222. Um, and then also Mario Works at Amazon by Liz and Dino. Both of these levels are really cool. The mushroom farm level in particular, you know, it's really neat how a, uh, a tractor was assembled and there was a plot to it where you had to go to a bank and then plant seeds. And there was actually a, an element of randomness in the outcome. It was really clever. Mario Works at Amazon was kind of, it was also very clever. Just the idea that you, you, you go, you start your shift uh, and you're driving around in your truck to different locations and they, they built a way where you had to deliver packages to people's homes and then once that was done, it unlocked the path so you could go forward. It was a very clever concept, both of them were. Which brings us to our winners. So in third place, we have, actually for this one, Stogie, why don't you do the honors? So for third place is Sergeant Stogie's Boot Camp by Keylon. It was amazing in many ways, and I loved it. The <laughs> Just the story behind it and all the references to the channel. I loved it. It was definitely, it was definitely heartwarming kind of seeing that stuff and seeing how all the inside jokes were utilized. But stripping that away, I think it was also a solid level. I think, you know, the concept and the theme of a boot camp and going through the different trials of like you know, running laps and other things like that. You know, you could see even even other characters were doing things in the background, doing high jumps or climbing walls. There was always something going on in each area that you were at. And ultimately, I think it just it was a solid level. It was, it was really well designed. Absolutely. So for second place, we have Toad's Quarry by Muffin King. So what I really liked about this level was it definitely felt like uh, you were you were clocking in. Like as soon as the level begins, you're presented with a hard hat, you jump up, you put it on, your shift is beginning at work. And it's just neat because like every aspect of this level. So in this level, you had to actually go through, I think four different areas um, and collect the keys. Um, but each area had a different type of mining operation going on. You had like the factory, um, I'm sorry, you had like the uh, big machines hauling weights and stuff, but you had drilling going on. You had you know, blasting going on, having to blow away rubble so you can get down to the bottom of the quarry. You had even like the uh, the big laser beams clearing rubble. It was kind of neat how each area was themed um, and it just felt like it was an actual quarry environment that kind of stretched from the time you clocked in and the time you left. So it was it was very clever. And for first place, drum roll. <laughs> Train Thief by OP Waluigi. My boy. 
The Train Thief level was actually, we enjoyed it a lot. It was a very simple stage uh, in terms of its, I guess, design. But it tell it told the story very, very well. Like I think even going into it, you you could tell what each area was supposed to be, from being outside the train station to picking up your ticket, to then going through the train multiple times, like almost like you're going through people's luggage and stuff, trying to find these different, <laughs> you know, red coins that were hidden throughout the entire stage. And it was kind of neat too, the way it was designed. It, it, it forced you to continually move through the train, but you could repeat the train process. But, um, and ultimately your goal was to get to, you know, the big treasure hoard. I think it was kind of neat. I mean, overall, it just felt like a really solid level. There's a lot going on. Um, it was perfect for two people because we could split up and do independent actions. Um, Stogie could go up top. I could go down below. That way we wouldn't miss anything in terms of character interactions or even finding the things that we're supposed to find so and we still missed them we still yeah. we missed the one that was uh if i remember correctly it was hidden behind a particular character or something yeah yeah so like the way this stuff was hidden it made you felt like you were truly stealing from people um <laughs> you know. so it was it was it was great we really liked that stage so those were our winners first place is train thief second place is toes quarry third place Sergeant Stogie's Boot Camp, and then our runner-ups, Mario Starts a Mushroom Farm, and Mario Works at Amazon. However, again, you guys made such incredible levels. Honestly, this was so, this is like, I went to this thinking like, I don't even know, but it took us forever to figure out these, these basically five to kind of like nail down what uh, aspects we liked most. And overall, going through a list of I mean, I don't know how many levels we had, like 80 something. It's difficult, but you guys did an excellent job. Thank you so much for your submissions. If you were a winner, we'll be contacting you soon um, to send over your prize. There'll be eShop codes you could easily enter. Um, but while we're here also, we're gonna swing on over to the other side of the, the competition that we didn't really talk about yet, which is the speed run competition. This is the recap video for the Swanky Zone speed running competition number one. So it closed, uh, geez, uh, a while ago. <laughs> it only went out for one one week, so it closed the Saturday after um, the contest was announced. But we're gonna be kind of going over the speed run, taking a look at some of these submitted gameplay that people have sent over. You may see some clips of yours in this video if you sent some over or if you posted them online. So I know you got to test this level, Stogie, or yeah, try it out after it came out. What was your thoughts? Because I was the one who made it. What was your thoughts? I did. In terms of and I went through it a few times like, all right. And I started getting a rhythm and I was able to get 16 seconds roughly. But after seeing that world record, oh my gosh, I am, <laughs> I, it, it's like, I want to, I want to be there with that person, but I couldn't do it. Yeah. So I couldn't I'll, do it. <laughs> so it's interesting because, you know, there's five coins in the stage, right? So we can go mm -hmm. ahead and so one of the ways that this could have been done at the beginning was actually you, know, you could have taken this shell right here, mm -hmm. jumped up and thrown it down. And actually how it works is, you know, when the shell hits a coin, it actually breaks through the blocks and you can get the coin that way. Well, you actually another way you could do this. Uh, so you actually need to do this. Go ahead and grab that uh, question mark block um, and go ahead and fly up to the other coin. So a lot of people go through the blocks underneath, actually, um, right. because if you have the big power up, you can actually oh. break through those. <laughs> Did you get the other power up up there? <laughs> I didn't mean it. Let's go ahead and restart real fast. I'm going to kind of. So I'm going to go through it real fast with the way that I envisioned it. Originally, when I was doing this, I was like, OK, well, that's not how you do this. <laughs> 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 so you get this. Boom, boom. Ten. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technically, nope, if fine. you if you got damaged right then, you could use the shell to launch over here. Um, one of the ways you could get this is ground pounding through these. But this whole thing's about shells, really, honestly. Shells, as you can see, that gets that coin. They actually would go down below, and get, which it just did, and get the coin down below. Now for these blocks, um, my original way of doing this was actually very interesting because. Uh, I've seen people just clear this super easy, like boom, and then boom, and that gets both coins. 
<laughs> that's how I was doing it. That's actually not intended, but that's actually incredible that people did it that way. Um, because with that, then you can touch the flagpole. I the idea for this level is when you're speed running. Mario, obviously, the idea is he's supposed to be in certain spots um, to collect the coins, right? But in order to optimize your speed the most you can, that's why I wanted to include shells in the level, because with shells, it allows Mario to be somewhere else while still collecting a coin. So as those shells kind of go through the level, break the blocks down, a lot of the, I mean, you have to really have a keen eye because there's a lot of noise in the level, a lot of blocks scattered in random places that actually serve no purpose. But there are some that have, you know, if a, if a shell is sent into them, the shell will fall down to get the, hit the coins. So one thing I want to show, and you'll see this just in a second, because we'll show the actual speed, the actual final run. Um, one of the things I was planning on doing is, there's actually an interesting thing with shell placement right here. So you could hypothetically throw this over there, let this come down through, um, and actually, depending on where your camera's at, will cause this to be able to be gotten. So if your camera's in the right position, this is really some um, some crazy meta, but um, depending on where your camera's at for the game, that shell could have bounced all the way down and got that coin. Now, Ooh. most people clear and get both these coins at the same time with a paw block. I'm not sure which one's faster, but if I were to say that someone were to 100% optimize the speed here, that the only way they could get faster would be to just get that top coin with the pow block and then just use their time long jumping through here, boom, onto the flagpole, so that when they touch the flagpole, that shell is actually getting that last coin down below. That's the only way I can think of basically getting this any faster. So with that, let's go I ahead and see. let's go ahead and watch some of the world records. So after the contest started, um, get all this water, Luigi. There we go. <laughs> so after the contest started, we had, um, I've been kind of taking photos and stuff of the world record. The first night, you know, we had a world record by um, Luki Oof, who had a record of 13.528, which is actually very fast still. But as the week went on, um, you know, new contenders kind of joined the fray. Luki held it, I believe. He got down to 13.011. Then we had, uh, it was June 8th, Paco Papa. Zero Two came in with 11.8. And we're going to look at that run right now. So Paco used the shell. They got the shell down below. Um, which got that coin. They used the power block to run across, get both at the same time. And they pretty much cleared it really fast. Now the thing is, yeah. with that run, they could have optimized more time by, and this is unintended, but not by throwing that Koopa shell at the beginning. It's unneeded. Um, it turns out it's unneeded. Because actually the shells above will actually eventually clear the, the coin below. So that was Paco Papas, who held that spot for you know, many, many days. And June 11th, they had 11.38. As the competition came to a close, the actual winning run was by Pi Guy 10, who got 11.217. And now we'll watch that run, which is absolutely incredible. So Pi Guy 10 starts, goes straight for the propeller cap, actually uses the shell above to clear Oh my the, gosh! Um, what? Below. Uses the other coin, or the other shell, to then clear them all, and really, never stops moving. Both shells collect uh, two coins in total, and then uses the POW block to clear off those last ones. So the only way I can think of optimizing that would be potentially using that last shell and throwing it forward so that they don't have to go down below at all. Um, but you'd have to think of a way that you could then hypothetically hit the pow block twice in order to collect that top coin. Um, but really, honestly, it's an incredible run. I don't, I, <laughs> I can't get that fast. It's insane, really, seeing what people have done this level. Um, oh my gosh. I know. I think what really helped shave his time off is the beginning, where he goes up 
and uh, takes out that that shell and that goes down like that's where I was uh, having issues when I right. was trying to do it myself. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely insane. Well, thank you so much, obviously, for everyone who submitted footage, who attempted the speed run. It was a lot of fun kind of seeing this behind the scenes and watching people, I guess, refine the process. And a lot of people did this blind, too. They, people weren't actively posting their speed runs online. Obviously, it's a competition. You don't want to show your hand. No. But it's kind of interesting to see how close some of the finalized runs actually were in terms of conciseness. But uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. This was kind of our breakdown of <laughs> the speedrun competition. Looks like Mario's going to kill Luigi. And we'll see you next time and potentially in a future competition. But all right, guys, thank you. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye-bye.